poetry of art, faith, and doubt in the 19th century. Ode on a Grecian Urn by John Keats Thou still unrabished bride of quietness, thou foster child of silence and slow time, sylvan historian, who canst thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than our rhyme. What leaf-fringed legend haunts about thy shape of deities or mortals or of both in temple or the dales of Arcady? What men or gods are these? What maidens loath? What mad pursuit? What struggles to escape? What pipes and timbrels? What wild ecstasy? Hard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore, ye soft pipes, play on, not to the sensual ear, but more endeared pipe to the spirit ditties of no tone. Fair youth beneath the trees, thou canst not leave thy song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Old lover, never, never canst thou kiss, though winning near the goal yet do not grieve. She care not fade, though you hast not thy bliss, for ever wilt thou love, and she be fair. Ah! Happy, happy boughs that cannot shed your leaves, nor ever bid the spring adieu, and happy melodist, unwearied for ever piping songs for ever new. More happy love, more happy, happy love, for ever warm and still to be enjoyed, for ever panting and for ever young. All breathing human passion far above, that leaves a heart high sorrowful and cloyed, a burning forehead and a parching tongue. Who are these coming to the sacrifice? To what green altar, O mysterious priest, leads thou that heifer lowing in the skies, and all her silken flanks with garlands dressed? What little town by river or seashore, or mountain built with peaceful citadel, is emptied of this folk, this pious morn? And little town, thy streets for evermore will silent be, and not a soul to tell why thou art desolate can e'er return. O attic shape, Fair attitude, with breed of marble men and maidens overwrought, with forest branches and with trodden weed, thou, silent form, dost tease us out of thought as doth eternity. Cold pastoral, when old age shall this generation waste, thou shalt remain, in midst of other woe than ours, a friend to man, to whom thou sayest, Beauty is truth, truth, beauty, that is all you know on earth and all ye need to know. La Belle Dame Sans Mercy by John Keats Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sedge has withered from the lake, and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, so haggard and so woe begone? The squirrel's granary is full, and the harvest's done. I see a lily on thy brow, with anguish moist and fever dew, and on thy cheeks a fading rose, fast withereth too. I met a lady in the meads, full beautiful, a fairy's child, her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were wild. I made a garland for her head, and bracelets too, and fragrant zone. She looked at me, as she did love, and made sweet moan. I set her on my pacing steed, and nothing else saw all day long, for sidelong would she bend, and sing a fairy song. She found me roots of relish sweet, and honey wild, and manna dew, and short in language strange, she said, I love thee true. She took me to her elfin grot, and there she wept and sighed full sore, and there I shut her wild, wild eyes with kisses for. And there she lulled me asleep, and there I dreamed, ah, woe betide, the latest dream I ever dreamt on the cold hillside. And I saw pale kings and princes too, pale warriors, death pale were they all. They cried, La Belle Dame sans mercy, thee hath in thrall. I saw their starved lips in the gloom, with horrid warning gaped wide, and I awoke and found me here on the cold hill's side. And this is why I saw it here, alone and palely loitering, though the sedge is withered from the lake, 
and no bad sing. The Lotus Eaters by Alfred Tennyson Courage, he said, and pointed towards the land. This mounting wave will roll us shoreward soon. In the afternoon they came unto a land in which it seemed always afternoon. All round the coast the languid air did swoon, breathing like one that hath a weary dream. Full-faced above the valley stood the moon, and like a downward smoke the slender stream along the cliff to fall and pause and fall did seem. A land of streams, some like a downward smoke, slow dropping veils of thinnest lawn did go, and some so wavering sheets and shadows broke, rolling a slumbrous sheet of foam below. And they saw the gleaming river seaward flow from the inner land, far off three mountain tops, three silent pinnacles of aged snow, stood sunset flushed, and dewed with showery drops up clomb the shadowy pine above the woven copse. The charmed sunset lingered low adown in the red west, through mountain clefts the dale was seen far inland, and the yellow down bordered with palm, and many a winding vale and meadow set with slender galingale, a land where all things always seemed the same, and round about the keel with faces pale, dark faces pale against that rosy flame, the mild-eyed melancholy lotus-eaters came. Branches they bore of that enchanted stem, laden with flower and fruit, whereof they gave to each, and whoso did receive of them and taste, to him the gushing of the wave far, far away did seem to mourn and rave on alien shores, and if his fellows spake, his voice was thin as voices from the grave, and deep asleep he seemed, yet all awake, and music in his ears his beating heart did make. They sat them down upon the yellow sand, between the sun and moon upon the shore, and sweet it was to dream of fatherland, of child and wife and slave. But evermore most weary seemed the sea, weary the oar, weary the wandering fields of barren foam. Then someone said, we will return no more. And all at once they sang, Our island home is far beyond the wave, We will no longer roam. There is sweet music here that softer falls Than petals from blown roses on the grass, Or night dews on still waters Between walls of shadowy granite in a gleaming pass, Music that gentlier on the spirit lies Than tired eyelids upon tired eyes, Music that brings sweet sleep down from the blissful skies. Here are cool mosses deep, and through the moss the ivies creep, and in the stream the long-leaved flowers weep, and from the craggy ledge the poppy hangs in sleep. Why are we weighed upon with heaviness, and utterly consumed with sharp distress, while all things else have rest from weariness? All things have rest. Why should we toil alone? We only toil who are the first of things and make perpetual moan, still from one sorrow to another thrown. Nor ever fold our wings and cease from wanderings, nor steep our brows in slumber's holy balm, nor hearken what the inner spirit sings, there is no joy but calm. Why should we only toil the roof and crown of things? Lo! No. In the middle of the wood the folded leaf is wooed from out the bud, with winds upon the branch, and there grows green and broad, and takes no care, sun steeped at noon, and in the moon nightly dew-fed, and turning yellow falls and floats adown the air. Oh, sweetened with the summer light, the full-juiced apple, waxing over mellow, drops in a silent autumn night. In all its allotted length of days the flower ripens in its place, ripens, and fades and falls, and has no toil fast rooted in the fruitful soil. Hateful is the dark blue sky, vaulted o'er the dark blue sea. Death is the end of life. Ah, why should life all labour be? Let us alone. Time driveth onward fast, and in a little while our lips are dumb. Let us alone. What is it that will last? All things are taken from us, and become portions and parcels of the dreadful past. Let us alone. What pleasure can we have to war with evil? Is there any peace in ever climbing up the climbing wave? All things have rest and ripen.
towards the grave in silence. Ripen, fall, and cease. Give us long rest, O death, dark death, O dreamful ease. How sweet it were, hearing the downward stream, with half-shut eyes ever to seem falling asleep in a half-dream, to dream and dream like yonder amber light which will not leave the myrrh-bush on the height, to hear each other's whispered speech, eating lotus day by day, to watch the crisping ripples on the beach and tender curving lines of creamy spray, to lend our hearts and spirits wholly to the influence of mild-minded melancholy, to muse and brood and live again in memory with those old faces of our infancy heaped over a mound of grass, two handfuls of white dust shut in an urn of brass. Dear is the memory of our wedded lives, and dear the last embraces of our wives, and their warm tears. And all hath suffered change, for surely now our household hearts are cold, our sons inherit us, our looks are strange, and we shall come like ghosts to trouble joy, or else the island princes over bold have eat our substance, and the minstrel sings before them of the ten years' war in Troy, and our great deeds as half-forgotten things. Is there confusion in the little isle? Let what is broken so remain. The gods are hard to reconcile. Tis hard to settle order once again. There is confusion worse than death. Trouble on trouble, pain on pain, long labour unto aged breath. Sore task to hearts worn out by many wars, and eyes grown dim with gazing on the pilot stars. But, propped on beds of amaranth and mole, how sweet, while warm airs lull us blowing lowly, with half-dropped eyelids still, beneath a heaven dark and holy, to watch the long, bright river drawing slowly his waters from the purple hill to hear the dewy echoes calling from cave to cave through the thick-twined vine, to watch the emerald-coloured water falling through many a woven acanthus wreath divine, only to hear and see the far-off sparkling brine, only to hear where sweet stretched out beneath the pine. The lotus blooms below the barren peak, the lotus blows by every winding creek, all day the wind breathes low with mellower tone, through every hollow cave and alley lone, round and round the spicy downs the yellow lotus dust is blown. We have had enough of action and of motion, we roll to starboard, roll to larboard, where the surge was seething free, where the wallowing monster spouted his foam fountains in the sea. Let us swear an oath and keep it with an equal mind, in the hollow lotus land to live and lie reclined on the hills like gods together, careless of mankind. For they lie beside their nectar, and the bolts are hurled far below them in the valleys, and the clouds are lightly curled round their golden houses, girdled with the gleaming world, where they smile in secret, looking over wasted lands, blight and famine, plague, and earthquake, roaring deeps and fiery sands, clanging fights and flaming towns, and sinking ships and praying hands, but they smile. They find a music centred in a doleful song, steaming up, a lamentation and an ancient tale of wrong, like a tale of little meaning, though the words are strong, chanted from an ill-used race of men that cleave the soil, sow the seed, and reap the harvest with enduring toil, storing yearly little dews of wheat and wine and oil, till they perish, and they suffer. Some, it is whispered, down in hell suffer endless anguish. Others in Elysian valleys dwell, resting weary limbs at last, on beds of asphodel. Surely, surely slumber is more sweet than toil. The shore than labour in the deep mid-ocean, wind and wave and oar. O oh, rest ye, brother mariners, we will not wander more. Break, break, break by Alfred Tennyson Break, break, 
break on thy cold grey stones, O sea, and I would that my tongue could utter the thoughts that arise in me. O oh, well for the fisherman's boy that he shouts with his sister at play, O oh, well for the sailor lad that he sings in his boat on the bay. And the stately ships go on to their haven under the hill, but over the touch of a vanished hand and the sound of a voice that is still, break, break, break at the foot of thy crags, O sea, but the tender grace of a day that is dead will never come back to me. Passages from In Memoriam by Alfred Tennyson Dark house, by which once more I stand, Here in the long, unlovely street, Doors, where my heart was used to beat, So quickly, waiting for a hand, A hand that can be clasped no more. Behold me, for I dare not sleep, And like a guilty thing I creep At earliest morning to the door. He is not here, but far away The noise of life begins again, And ghastly through the drizzling rain, and the bold street breaks the blank day. Be near me, when my light is low, When the blood creeps, and the nerves prick and tingle, And the heart is sick, and all the wheels of being slow. Be near me, when the sensuous frame is wrecked With pangs that conquer trust, And time a maniac scattering dust, And life a fury slinging flame. Be near me, when my faith is dry, and men the flies of latter spring, that lay their eggs and sting and sing, and weave their petty cells and die, be near me, when I fade away, to point the term of human strife, and on the low dark verge of life, the twilight of eternal day. Oh, yet we trust that somehow good will be the final end of ill, to pangs of nature, sins of will, defects of doubt, and taints of blood, that nothing walks with aimless feet, that not one life shall be destroyed, or cast as rubbish to the void, when God hath made the pile complete, that not a worm is cloven in vain, that not a moth with vain desire is shriveled in a fruitless fire, or but subserves another's gain. Behold, we know not anything, I can but trust that good shall fall at last, far off at last to all, and every winter change to spring. So runs my dream, that what am I? An infant crying in the night, an infant crying for the light, and with no language but a cry. You say, but with no touch of scorn, sweet-hearted you, whose light blue eyes are tender over drowning flies, you tell me doubt is devil born. I know not. One, indeed, I knew in many a subtle question first, who touched a jarring lyre at first, but ever strove to make it true, perplexed in face and pure in deeds, at last he beat his music out. There lives more faith in honest doubt, believe me, than in half the creeds. He fought his doubts, and gathered strength. He would not make his judgment blind. He faced the spectres of the mind, and laid them. Thus he came at length to find a stronger faith his own, and power was with him in the night, which makes the darkness and the light, and dwells not in the light alone, but in the darkness and the cloud, as over Sinai's peaks of old, while Israel made their gods of gold, although the trumpet blew so loud. Doors, where my heart was used to beat so quickly, not as one that weeps, I come once more. The city sleeps, I smell the meadow in the street, I hear a chirp of birds, I see betwixt the black fronts long withdrawn a light blue lane of early dawn, and think of early days, and thee, and bless thee, for thy lips are bland, and bright the friendship on thine eye. Yet in my thoughts with scarce a sigh, I take the pressure of thine hand. God's Grandeur by Gerald Manley Hopkins The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out 
like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness, like the ooze of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. And for all this, nature is never spent. There lives the dearest freshness, deep down things, and though the last lights off the black west went, O oh, morning, at the brown brink eastward springs, because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and with ah bright wings. Heaven, haven, a nun takes the veil, by Gerard Manley Hopkins. I have desired to go where springs not fail, to fields where flies no sharp and sided hail and a few lilies blow. And I've asked to be where no storms come, where the green swell is in the havens dumb, and out of the swing of the sea. Spring and Fall to a Young Child by Gerard Manley Hopkins Margaret, are you grieving over Golden Grove and leaving? Leaves like the things of man, you with your fresh thoughts care for, can you? Ah, as the heart grows older, it will come to such sights colder by and by, nor spare a sigh, though worlds of one would leaf meal lie, and yet you will weep and know why. Now no matter, child, the name, sorrow's springs are the same, nor mouth heard, no, nor mind expressed, what heart heard of, ghost, guest. It is the blight man was born for, it is Margaret you mourn for. No worst there is none, by Gerard Manley Hopkins. No worst there is none, pitched past grief of grief, more pangs will scold at four pangs, wild a ring. Comforter, where, where is your comforting? Mary, mother of us, where is your relief? My cries heave, herds long, huddle in a main, a chief woe, world sorrow, on an age-old anvil, wince and sing, then lull, then leave off. Fury had shrieked, no lingering, let me be fell, force I must be brief. No oh, the mind, mind has mountains, cliffs of fall, frightful sheer, no man fathomed, hold them cheap, may who ne'er hung there nor does long our small endurance deal with that steep or deep. Here, creep, wretch, under a comfort serves in a whirlwind, all life death does end, and each day dies with sleep. Echo by Christina Rossetti Come to me in the silence of the night, come in the speaking silence of a dream. Come with soft rounded cheeks and eyes as bright as sunlight on a stream. Come back in tears, O oh memory, hope, love of finished years. O oh dream, how sweet, too sweet, too bitter sweet, whose wakening should have been in paradise, where souls brimful of love abide and meet, where thirsting longing eyes watch the slow door that opening, letting in, lets out no more. You'd come to me, in dreams, that I may live my very life again, though cold in death. Come back to me in dreams, that I may give pulse for pulse, breath for breath, speak low, lean low, as long ago, my love, how long ago. Uphill by Christina Rossetti Does the road wind uphill all the way? Yes, to the very end. Will the day's journey take the whole long day? From morn to night, my friend. But is there for the night a resting place? A roof for when the slow dark hours begin? May not the darkness hide it from my face? You cannot miss that inn. Shall I meet other wayfarers at night? Those who have gone before? Then must I knock, or call when just in sight? They will not keep you standing at the door. Shall I find comfort, travel sore and weak? Of labour you shall find the sum. Will there be beds for me and all who seek? 
yea, beds for all who come. The Convent Threshold by Christina Rossetti There's blood between us, love, my love. There's father's blood, there's brother's blood. And blood's a bar I cannot pass. I choose the stairs that mount above, stare after golden skyward stare to city and to sea of glass. My lily feet are soiled with mud, with scarlet mud which tells a tale of hope that was, of guilt that was, of love that shall not yet avail. Alas, my heart, if I could bear my heart, this self-same stain is there. I seek the sea of glass and fire to wash the spot, to burn the snare. Those stairs are meant to lift us higher. Mount with me, mount the kindled stair. Your eyes look earthward, mine look up. I see the far-off city grand, beyond the hills a watered land, beyond the gulf a gleaming strand of mansions with a righteous sup who sleep at ease among their trees, or wake to sing a cadenced hymn with cherubim and seraphim. They bore the cross, they drained the cup, racked, roasted, crushed, wrenched, limb from limb, they the offscouring of the world. The heaven of starry heavens unfold, the sun before their faces dim. You looking earthward, what see you? Milk white, wine flushed among the vines, up and down leaping to and fro, most glad, most full, made strong with wines, blooming as peaches pearled with dew, their golden windy hair afloat, love music warbling in their throat. Young men and women come and go. You linger, yet the time is short. Flee for your life, gird up your strength to flee. The shadows stretched at length, Show that day wanes, that night draws nigh. Flee to the mountain, tarry not. Is it a time for smile and sigh, For songs among the secret trees, Where sudden bluebirds nest and sport? The time is short, and yet you stay. Today, while it is cold today, Kneel, wrestle, knock, do violence, pray. Today is short, tomorrow, nigh. Why will you die? Why will you die? You sinned with me, a pleasant sin. Repent with me, for I repent. Woe's me the law I must unlearn. Woe's me the easy way we went, so rugged when I would return. How long until my sleep begin? How long shall stretch these nights and days? Surely clean angels cry, she prays. She laves her soul with tedious tears. How long must stretch these years and years? I turn from you my cheeks and eyes, my hair which you shall see no more. Alas, for joy that went before, for joy that dies, for love that dies. Only my lips still turn to you, my livid lips that cry repent. A weary life, a weary lent, a weary time whose stars are few. How shall I rest in paradise, or sit on steps of heaven alone? If saints and angels spoke of love, should I not answer from my throne? Have pity upon me, ye my friends, for I have heard the sound thereof. Should I not turn with yearning eyes, turn earthwards with a pitiful pang? Oh, save me from a pang in heaven. By all the gifts we took and give, repent, repent, and be forgiven. This life is long, but yet it ends. Repent and purge your soul and save. No gladder song the morning stars upon their birthday morning sang than angels sing when one repents. I tell you what I dreamed last night. A spirit with a transfigured face, fire-footed clomb an infinite space. I heard his hundred pinions clang, heaven bells rejoicing rang and rang, heaven air was thrilled with subtle sense, words spun upon their rushing ears. He mounted shrieking, give me light. Still light was poured on him, more light. Angels, archangels he outstripped, exulting in exceeding might, and trod the skirts of cherubim. Still give me light, he shrieked, and dipped his thirsty face, and drank a sea, a thirst with thirst it could not slake. I saw him, drunk with knowledge, take from aching brows the aurole crown, his locks writhed like a cloven snake, he left his throne to grovel down, and lick the dust of seraph's feet. For what is knowledge duly weighed? Knowledge is strong, but love is sweet. Yea, all the progress he had made was but to learn that all is small save love, for love is all in all. I tell you what I dreamed last night. It was not dark, it was not light. Cold dews had drenched my plenteous hair through clay. You came to seek me there. And do you dream of me, you said. 
My heart was dust that used to leap to you. I answered, half asleep. My pillow is damp, my sheets are red. There's a laden tester to my bed. Find you a warmer playfellow, a warmer pillow for your head, a kinder love to love than mine. You wrung your hands while I, like lead, crushed downwards through the sodden earth. You smote your hands, but not in mirth, and reeled, but were not drunk with wine. For all night long I dreamed of you. I woke and prayed against my will, then slept to dream of you again. At length I rose and knelt and prayed. I cannot write the words, I said. My words were slow, my tears were few. But through the dark my silence spoke like thunder. When this morning broke, my face was pinched, my hair was grey, and frozen blood was on the sill, where stifling in my struggle I lay. If now you saw me, you would say, Where is the face I used to love? And I would answer, Gone before, it tarries, veiled in paradise. When once the morning star shall rise, when earth with shadow flees away, and we stand safe within the door, then you will lift the veil thereof. Look up, rise up, for far above our palms are grown, our place is set. There we shall meet, as once we met, and love with old familiar love. At a Cotter of Galoopies by Robert Browning. O oh, Galoopy, Baldassaro, this is very sad to find. I can hardly misconceive you, it would prove me deaf and blind. But although I take your meaning, it is of such a heavy mind. Here you come with your old music, and here's all the good it brings. What they lived once thus at Venice, where the merchants, where the kings, where St. Marx's, where the doges used to wed the sea with rings. Aye, because the sea is the street there, and is arched by, what do you call, Shylock's Bridge with houses on it, where they kept the carnival. I was never out of England. It's as if I saw it all. Did young people take their pleasure when the sea was warm in May? Balls and masks began at midnight, burning ever to midday, when they made up fresh adventures for the morrow, do you say? Was a lady such a lady, cheeks so round and lips so red, on her neck the small face buoyant, like a bellflower on its bed, all the breath's superb abundance, where a man might base his head? Well, and it was graceful of them, they'd break talk off and afford she to bite her mask's black velvet, he to finger on his sword, while you sat and played to Cotus, stately of the clavichord. What, those lesser thirds so plaintive, sixths diminished, sigh on sigh, told them something, those suspensions, those solutions, must we die, those commiserating sevenths, life might last, we can but try. Were you happy? Yes. And are you still as happy? Yes, and you? Then more kisses. Did I stop them, when a million seemed so few? Hark, the dominance persistence, till it must be answered to. So an octave struck the music. Oh, they praised you, I dare say. Brave Galupi, that was music. Good and like it, grave and gay. I can always leave off talking when I hear a master play. Then they left you for their pleasure, till in due time, one by one, some with lives that came to nothing, some with deeds as well undone, death stepped tacitly, and took them where they never see the sun. But when I sit down to reason, think to take my stand or swerve, while I triumph o'er a secret wrung from nature's close reserve, in you come with your cold music till I creep through every nerve. Yes, you, like a ghostly cricket, creaking where a house was burned, dust and ashes, dead and done with, Venice spent what Venice earned, the soul doubtless is immortal, where a soul can be discerned. Yours, for instance, you, no physics, something of geology, mathematics are your pastime, souls shall rise in their degree, butterflies, they dread extinction. You'll not die. It cannot be. As for Venice and her people, merely born to bloom and drop, here on earth they bore their fruitage, mirth and folly, where the crop. What of soul was left, I wonder, when the kissing had to stop? Dust and ashes. So you cricket, and I want the heart to scold. Dear dead women, with such hair too, what's become of all the gold used to hang and brush their bosoms? I feel chilly and grown old.